Hello everyone, this is Brock Skaggs, and I'm make this video where we're going to emphasize using the probe tool inside of SOLIDWORKS simulation to get feedback instead of just at a single point on the model, along an entire edge of the model. And so, for instance, here I've got a, a very simple model here, just one boss extruded extrusion. You can see the, the cross section is one inch by half inch, 48 inches long, and we're going to think of this as a simply supported beam carrying a uniformly distributed load. And so what we're going to do from that is basically get the elastic curve from that. And so what I mean by elastic curve is basically I want to be able to develop a plot that shows at every point x along the length of the beam we know the deflection. And so with that let's go ahead and get right into the simulation side of SOLIDWORKS. And so I believe I have simulation already added in. So we'll go from simulation to new study and we'll just go to static one. And so now reviewing what's already been brought in, um, I did have a material predefined, and so it already knows that this beam is going to be ASTM A36 steel. Uh, as far as thinking on the theory side of things, that should bring the modulus elasticity to right around 29 times 10 to the 6 PSI. We don't need to worry about connections for this. We will need to worry about fixtures. And so with this, let's consider this end of the beam to have a pin connection and a roller on the right side. And so I'll just go into fixtures. I'll select fixed geometry, but I really I'm going to think I'm going to use advanced. And so here, under advanced, I'm using use reference geometry. I'll select this very bottom edge you can see on the part. My plane of reference will be just the front plane, the plane kind of the that the beam is actually lying in. Here I'll just leave it in millimeters because I'm basically going to be toggling these things on or off for the prescribed displacement. And what I want this thing to do is not be able to translate at all. And so I'll just zero out all of the translation, translational degree of freedoms inside of the user reference geometry options here. And so what this should allow this edge to do, it should be able to rotate along the edge or rotate along the z-axis like a pin connection, but it won't be able to translate at all, which is exactly what I'm looking for. And so I'll go ahead and accept that. Now I'll go right back in, I'll go to fixed geometries again, and I'll go down to use reference geometry, and this time I'm going to work on this very bottom edge on the right hand side. And so here I've got the edge selected, I'll use the front plane again as the reference plane, and this time I want to allow it to slide in the X direction. And so for sliding in the X direction with the front plane selected as the reference plane, that means I'll leave this grade out, this very top one. Uh, you can see it says along plane direction one. Uh, that is going to represent the X direction since again I've used the front plane as the reference plane. And so here I don't want to put anything there. And so I'll just leave it grayed out. But I do not want it to move up and down. By up and down I mean in the Y direction. So I'll select that and leave it at zero. Um, you can see immediately as I and it activated it, I got these little green arrows on the model which should help you to figure out which direction these kind of cryptic graphics are showing. And then I'll also go in the Z direction here because I don't want this thing to slide in either the Y or Z direction, but I do want it to be able to possibly slide in the X direction, just like a, a roller would support. And so with that, I'll accept it. And so that should get us the fixtures. And now for the loads quickly, uh, here I want a force. And really I'm thinking two pounds per foot is the uniformly distributed load I want. Uh, this entire thing is four feet long, so it's a total of eight pounds pushing downward in the negative y direction. And so what I'm going to do is I'll select this very top face. I'll go to select the direction. Uh, here I'll click the top plane as my reference plane. I'll change it to IPS units so I can add pounds. And since my top plane is the reference plane, I want to make sure that these go in the negative y direction. So um, here I enabled the normal two plane and then I had to reverse the direction to get them pointing downward in the negative y direction. And so here I'm going to put the statically equivalent point load value associated with my distributed load. And so again I had two pounds per foot uniformly distributed along the beam and so here I'm thinking well two pounds per foot four feet of beam and so that should be eight total pounds pushing downward and I'm putting the eight right here in this box. Basically what it allows SOLIDWORKS to do is take that eight pounds and it's going to uniformly distribute it over the face that I have selected which is exactly what I'm wanting. You might be asking, well what if I don't want it uniformly distributed? Well you can see down here I could check into the non-uniform distribution region then I'd have to somehow describe to SOLIDWORKS how I'm going to distribute this load over this face of the beam. 
But for now, just a nice simple beam with a uniform distributed load of 2 pounds per foot, or total downward force of 8 pounds. And so I'll accept that. And so now we're ready to run. So I'll just right click and go mesh and run. I'll accept the default mesh size, and this should go fairly quickly. Very quickly, just like so. Uh, so one of the things that's good to have to get into is just check the kind of the exaggerated shape here of the beam. Make sure everything looks correct. And make sure you didn't apply a fixture incorrectly here. Uh, one of the things I'm looking at here is, well, obviously the beam droops downward, as I would expect. Uh, but also notice here that the angle is changing here. You can see the kind of transparent uh, of the unloaded beam there. And notice it starts off horizontal, and then it dips down to less than horizontal there, kind of an acute angle it's making with the vertical, which is exactly what I would expect for a pin connection here on the left-hand side and a roller on the right-hand side. And so that's looking good. And so next I'm going to go to the displacement plot here. And one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to want to grab the information about the deflection at any given point along the length of the beam. And what I'm really after is I want to compare that to my theoretical solution. And so if you watched another video I made, I basically went through this derivation to how to derive the elastic curve equation for the beam we're looking at. And so we came up with a set of equations for the bending moment, how it changes, and then for us the elastic curve equation or the deflection formula down here below. And so what I've done at this point is use the beam geometry and the characteristics of the loading in order to calculate this range of data that you're seeing. And so then I plotted it, and one way we can verify or help have a little bit more confidence in our theoretical calculation is to compare it with another source, that source being the numerical approach by SOLIDWORKS. And so I want to basically pull all the data from my SOLIDWORKS model so that I can bring it into Excel and then make a plot and see if these curves line up with each other. And so to do that, uh, first thing I have to mean I have to be measuring the same thing and I have to have the same units. And so what I'll do is I'll right click on my displacement plot, I'll edit the definition. Resultant displacement will probably get me there, but just in case, I'm going to go ahead and go to just the Y component, which I believe most of it, if not everything, is going to be in the Y component anyhow, so I'll leave that there. Also units, I want to be in inches instead of millimeters. And then I'll hit the checkbox here. And so you can see the, the result there. Um, at the far ends, right up next to the fixtures, I have zero displacement in the Y direction, which is exactly what I expect. And I have the maximum displacement near the middle of the beam, which again is what I expect. And so now to, th to the purpose of this video, we wanted to show the probe tool. And so probe tool, um, as you're used to it, the default is at location. So I can come in here and I can pick different points, and it'll give me the displacement in the Y direction for that specific point which is great, uh, but here I don't want to have to go through and pick points all the long, way along the length of the beam. That would take forever. And so one thing I'll do is say on selected entities. And so when I click that radio button, it's basically waiting for me to select a face, an edge, or vertices here. Well, I'm going to select just this bottom edge of the part, and then I will click Update. And so you'll notice what happens is it's basically reporting the values of all the nodes that lie along that edge. And so it gives me the X a Y and a Z value there. And we can also plot this, I believe. And so we can show a plot real quickly of what we're seeing. And so you can see the, the general shape that we would expect there. And also you'll notice that it's a parametric distance here. And so instead of being between 0 and 48 inches, they have just param parameterized it so that it's between 0 and 1 there. And so we can make use of that, though, still. And so what we're going to do is we'll save this. And so here I'm just going to save it in the default location. And you can see it saves it as a CSV file, a comma separated values file. And so that's fine. I'll hit OK and the green check mark. And so basically what we did at this point is if we come in here to the results area of the simulation, I have basically created a CSV file that I can then open in Excel. You can see it's 1036. It's Wednesday, February the 3rd of 2016 is when I'm doing the video. And all of the data from that plot and all the data that it grabbed from the probe tool is now right inside of Excel, uh, which is a very nice thing. Um, notice here it's also giving me the actual X position here, which is nice, instead of that parameterized value. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this value column and the X column, and I'll take it from the CSV file. I'll copy and paste it into my Excel file, and so here is the SOLIDWORKS solution, 
just call it SLD Works Solution. And let's see if this matches up with the, the blue curve I have here. And so we'll select data. We'll add another series. Here we'll call this SolidWorks. The X values will just be the X values here. Again, these are the values coming right from the probe tool using selected entities. And the Y values are going to be the value column. This should be the vertical displacement in the Y direction. And so, making sure not to get the headers, just like so. Uh, now I've got them both there. It's a little hard to see, so I'll go ahead and format the data series uh, quickly here. Just like so. And one of the things you can see is that our theoretical solution matches up exactly with the, the solver solution there. Those curves are right on top of each other, uh, which gives us quite a bit of confidence in our theoretical solution uh, since we're now verifying it with an independent source from the, the SOLIDWORKS simulation there. And so all that was done again with the help of the probe tool. And so probe in SOLIDWORKS again on selected entities, select your entity, hit update, and then it's going to basically pull all the data it can along that entity, in this case the, the edge of our beam. And so hopefully that helps you work with your models inside of SOLIDWORKS simulation and be able to pull large quantities of data off of it at a time instead of just using the allocation version of the probe tool. And so as always, thank you for watching the video.